Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, welcome to part one of two, a video for the Darkstalkers Universal Fighting Systems or UFS. Uh, what is the UFS? It's a uh, cool card game that lets you mix, uh, you can just play by themselves, or you can mix various fighting game franchises. Street Fighter, Soul Calibur, King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, um, Darkstalkers, which we're going to go over, um, as well as some other, like, Outside ones, like they have, Sha I think it's Shadow Wars, which is like their wholly original uh, characters. And then there's also like Mega Man, Yu Yu Hakusho, and there might be some others I, I, I looked over. But you can mix them out and have them actually compete in a fighting game. Um, so in this video, we're going to go over two starter decks for the Dark Stalkers. This is actually for Series 2. It's, um, I got a Felicia deck and I got a John Talbin deck. And it's for... Uh, Warriors of the Night. Um, so we're going to go over that. And then in the second video, I'm going to go over all the other random cards I bought over the years. I just got these starter decks. I kind of wanted to go through them. Um, but what I'm also going to do before that, before I jump into the starter decks, is we're going to, I'm going to do a very brief explanation on how the game is played. So that while we're looking over the cards, you understand what's going on. Um. Each box, though, just to point this out, starter box will, at least in these two, will contain 59 deck cards plus one foil character card and one ultra rare foil card. So you're getting a full deck of 60 cards, your 59 regular plus your character card, and then your ultra rare foil can be a random one from the set, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's sort of neat. All right, so to jump in, to look at this, I already got the game kind of set up. So you're going to have a couple of different types of cards. You're going to have your main character card. Um, you have green asset cards. You have black or black or gray foundation cards. Um, and then you have orange attack cards. Those are essentially the four types of cards you have. There's a fifth one which is blue, which I don't have in this particular deck here, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, let me see if I have one in this pot. Nope. Um, but basically, these are the cards, as you play them, they stay on the table um, to be used for different things. Uh, I got a little blurry going on there. I'm sorry, it's not all in focus. Um, I know I just go so far away, otherwise it becomes too hard to read. But basically, your character card will determine all your different, uh, stats. Um, it's gonna have, uh, your hand size over here, and your health, that's how much damage you can take. Your side expansion there. And then it has the symbols on the front of the card. Um, any card you have in your deck must match those symbols. So, it limits how you can build your deck, mix and match, and so, like, uh, John Talbin here, or Jay Talbin, can only use uh, these three different symbols in his deck. So you see these other cards, uh, at least all of these match them. So whatever character uh, cards have the picture of the character on there, they typically match um, their thing. You now it's like, it is alternate, as I do have this one, although it has John Talbin on it, it's actually a BB Hood, a B Bonnie Hood card. Um, so it has three different symbols, but I have the fire symbol that matches, so he can still use it. Uh, and then later that becomes more advanced when you're trying to play uh, chain combos together, is that you have to have m more and more matching symbols. So you can't just, um, you can't keep playing cards that have different symbols over and over. So like, if you make them all with the same symbols, then your deck's going to be a little bit more limited, but you can play it chain things together. If you sp spread them out, you'll have a variety of deck, but it might be harder to play some of them. Um, the other big thing to point out on cards is up in the top corner is the cost. Uh, this is one of the big things for the game. So every time you play a card, whether I'm playing a brand new foundation down, if I was playing a new asset, a new attack, um, whatever, you have to do what's called a card check. So, if I wanted to play this two-cost uh, Kurt's Bloodline card, I would place it down in front of me. This is like my uh, play area to set up for the turn. Then you'd have to flip the top card of your deck, and you'd look for this control number on the bottom. And if it's higher, you get to play your card. So, that would be a six. So, if I flipped over this one, it's a five. 
Uh, so that means I did to play my card. Uh, but if I played, you know, I think lots of, like, a two-cost card is going to be very easy to do. And this one, four. I did to play it. So those are very easy to play. Um, and I did to play this card. Now, this would stay up here till the end of my turn. And at the end of my turn, since it's a foundation, I would move it down into my pile. I can keep using it. Um, you're going to get costs that cost zero. Um, some that cost one or two. So basically, the lower your cost of cards are, the easier are to play. Now, um, say you're like, things like foundations, your assets, things that stay in play are easier. The things that cost more tend to be your attack cards. You know, his deck only has a lot of fours and fives. But now, instead of playing this, let's say I tried to play his Driving Beast Canyon, which costs four. I flip over the top card of my deck. I have a three. So my, my attack missed. Uh, Unless I can commit a card to it. So now you have foundations down here. That's basically what they do. You can essentially commit them or tap them if you play other games. Uh, exhaust them. But they call it committing. And that pays for the, my 3 plus 1. So that's 4. So now you can use my attack. Um, then you actually enter the attack phase. Um, players can play abilities to try and boost or uh, boost up the attack. Or uh, knock it out. Do things like that. Um, and then you play a block phase, which I'll go over in just a moment. Um, but let's say my attack was successful. I hit my opponent. I'd like to combo that into another another one. And I'm just going to... I got lucky I had another Diving Beast Cannon. So I'm going to play that there. So now I have to do my check again for that four. So now I check and I get another three. So now I could be like, well, I can commit one. And that would be my four. Except now that I'm playing a second row in my combo streak... I have to pay one more. So now instead of this costing four, it costs five. So I could commit this card. I could also commit my character card. So now I can pay for that. And now I pay for five. I do all my checks. I see if my attack hit or miss or not. Let's say it hit a second time. You know, now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play a third one. Um, so I play, you know, very probably get all three of these in a row. But I play a third diving cannon. So now it has four. So now I have to check again, and I check, and I get another three. I have no more cards I can commit. I can't commit my assets. You can only commit your character card, because your character card basically doubles as a backup for almost everything else. Um, and then I can also commit my uh, foundation. So I don't have enough to play that, so it fails. Now, if I would have drawn this five, it still would have failed, because it's four, Plus one, plus two, so it's actually have to pay six. So the long, the longer and longer your combos go, the harder and harder they're gonna get. So you might do a couple of attacks, and then towards the end you might play your cheaper cards um, when your all your things are committed. So that's just one different aspect of the game. All right, I'm gonna put all of these back for a moment. Now we're gonna. Scoot these down. We're going to take a little bit better look at the attack cards. So, let's say I played my Driving Beast Cannon for four. I was able to pay for the cost, however, either I did the checking it paid for it or I was able to commit other cards. Now I have to attack. So, here I have my attack main. My attack speed is uh, four and it has three little dots on there. Um, and that is the range I am attacking. So this is a high a high attack. So if you're if you're familiar with fighting games, you have high, mediums, and lows. So this is what makes this game really interesting. Is that depending on what you have is depending on where you're attacking. And then below it is the four damage. So now my opponent probably wants to block this card. Um, so what they do is they play a card from their hand. Um, they still have to do a check on their card as well. Because it works the same way. Anytime you're doing it, they have to do a check. So they could try and block, and they could fail their, their commit cards. They want to play this for three to block me. They might fail their test or not have anything any cards able to commit because they used them all last turn during their attack. Um, they went all around their attack. Basically, their character now is going to start missing attacks or missing block opportunities. So it's, it's that back and forth. You have to keep some of your, like, your resources open. Um, but let's say they did play this, and now this has a block symbol up in the top corner. 
things like attack has it on one side, block has it on the other. Um, and then what you want to do is it's going to try and block that same uh, spot. So this one's trying to block a lower. Now you can't block an upper with a lower. You can't block a high kick with a low with a low sweep or anything like that. So the only way for me to block that is I would have to play a card that has a high. So now this is a foundation. Like that was an attack. Some of the foundations, some assets, lots of other cards have blocks as well. Um, so you're going to play this block that has plus three on it. So basically what I'm going to do is compare them together. Now they're going to play it this direction, but it's still a high even though it's upside down. Um, but now for them to check this, is not actually gonna, they're not going to actually check it with this number. Sorry, I missaid that. They're going to check their, how they check to see if a card uh, can block or not is they have to check the attack speed versus the block number. Um, so it's going to be 4 plus 3. Uh, so yeah, they have, they have to block with 7s. So they have to pull with a 7. So it's probably going to take them a couple of good commits. So it's like if it's a high attack um, and it's a really high block number, or it's a, a card that's not really meant to block, it's going to be a lot harder for them to do that. Um, so my attack succeeds. Um, with this because they went, if they couldn't perform it, my attack succeeds, I do 4 damage. Let's say they were able to commit enough cards to block it. So they block it, I have a block with a high versus a high. Blocks 100% of the damage. If they block with this card, which is a medium, which is one distance away, it does half damage. So I only do 2. Um, so that's kind of, it's kind of a neat factor there too. So you can... Not only do you have to decide if you have the right card to block, can you afford to pay for it, um, is it might also, you know, do some damage, do half damage, um, things like that. Um, Alright, so that is the difference. There's other different stuff on the cards I'll kind of go over as we go through. I just want to look at the character card again. So your character card does have a cost. Now your main character starts in play, but you can have other characters in your deck. Um, other versions of your characters you can play as well and use for things. So now, if I already have him out using a second copy, I can use him as a block. I can use him as a commit card. Um, they do have higher level cards you can get, so the little dots by them. You can get level 2s, level 3s, which basically go on top of your character and change their abilities. Um, so that's kind of neat. So your characters can do a lot of stuff. Then lots of your characters will also have two other effects on here. Or two, or lots of cards will have two other stuff. They have E and R. E is for enhance. So when you play an attack, um, now both players go back and forth taking turns using enhance effects. So if it's on a... Oop, sorry. If it's on a card that's already on the table, like my character cards or my assets, I can just go ahead and use it. I don't have to spend anything extra. If I want to play a card from my hand to use it, I have to then perform another commit cost. So every time you're playing something from your hand, you're not commit a check cost. You always have to check to see if that uh, that hits or not. Um, so that's one of the big things in the game. Now R is for response. This is basically saying I can commit this card, and then after one of these does this, I can draw two cards. So just in response of doing stuff. Um, and then there's various, some of the cards have keywords that interact with each other, do different stuff like that. The other big gimmick of the game, then, is besides knocking your opponent's life down to zero, is every time your deck runs out of cards, which it's going to because you draw cards every turn to refill your hand, um, is you also, and then you're always committing, or doing the checks to see if your cards can get played, but when your deck runs out, you reshuffle it. So unlike lots of games like, oh, my deck ran out, the game is over, or I have to play if I have it. You know, you get to reshuffle your deck and play. You just have to just you just have to remove the top ten cards of your deck. Um, so every time you have to reshuffle your deck, your deck is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally you can't do it anymore. And that's essentially saying if your opponent hasn't, you know, if you haven't defeated someone based on defeat lower in their health to zero, your character is too exhausted to continue fighting. Um, so playing a lot of cards in a row, a lot of combos is, you know, a good thing. You might do some high damage. 
but you're also going to possibly exhaust yourself quicker that way. Uh, so it's a neat little mechanic. The only other thing I didn't bring up, and again, I didn't go over every rule step by step by step. I just wanted an idea of what each symbol is on the cards meant. Was beginning your turn after you uncommit everything and you ready all your cards. Um, you actually have a review phase where you can discard. I don't remember if it's one card or any number of cards. I have to double check the instructions. But you have discard cards from your hand before you redraw your hand. So essentially you can be like... You know, oh, this card doesn't help me anymore. This card wasn't useful. Or I can't use this. Um, or I already have one of these in play. And you could discard it. And then you can draw a new card. So you kind of like prep yourself before the fight. Uh, to make sure you have cards in your hand that are actually going to work. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and jump into these decks now. Alright, now to jump into the decks, we have, let's start off with the John Talbin deck, or Jay Talbin, he's the werewolf. So if you're not familiar with Darkstalkers, what it is, of course it's a fighting game. Uh, but you're playing as various uh, monsters or otherworldly creatures. Uh, so like, he's clearly a werewolf. We have Felicia, who's a um, cat girl. You have lots of people know um, some of the other ones. Uh, my brain's not functioning here. Uh, we have Morgana and her sister Lilith, who are succubus. Um, there's Sasquatch Victor, who's the Frankenstein's monster. Um, Arrakis, who's the mummy. Uh, there's Lord Raptor, who's a zombie. So there's, and then there's some hum human characters as well, like Donovan and, uh, Bebani Hood, who are, like, essentially monster hunters. Um, uh, not all monsters are bad. Uh, some are really bad. Some are, you know, fight for good. Uh, so it's a very interesting, cool fighting game series. Uh, of course, they have special moves like fireballs and turning to balls. And we'll see some of them, some in here. Uh, alright, so we're gonna hop into this. So you get a foil version in the deck of your main character for the deck. We saw the non-foil version, which you'll also get a copy of. It's the exact same card. Uh, just that. And then your main character will kind of get... Di dictate or determine what your deck is going to do. So, like, John Colvin here says, if this is your first strike this turn, he gets plus two damage and plus two speed. Um, so, yeah, what he wants to do is he wants to, like, when he does attacks, he's going to, if you can afford to, enhance your enhance by not spending your main character to pay for stuff. So, basically, you can make your first attack more powerful. Um... And then his, his other one is reaction. It says, after your kicks, punches, and slams, deal damage, draw two cards. Then you can refill his hand very quickly. Um, and I'm not going to read through every single card. The foil ones are because they're a um, SE or special edition. I guess that's what it stands for. Um, kind of like super rare-ish type cards. Uh, so he has two copies of uh, Climb Laser, which is a special kick. Uh, so, you know, there's no list, it's an attack over here, uh, but you also have the attack symbols. Uh, so this has keywords kick and combo slam, so like the other card reference to kick. Um, uh, again, first card your turn, you get a stun to, and that's combo E, so if you have six or more cards in your hand, your attack gets two damage and two speed. So a combo E, I, I, I remember all the keywords off the top of my head, the instruction rule books do tell you. Um, but I believe combo means it can only be played, um, second, and I think on with a combo, with only with a slam attack. Um, so there are restrictions on some of the cards. And then we have two copies of Breaking Limits, uh, Foundations. Um, so this is unique, which means you can only have one in play at a time. But that means your other one can always be used as a commit or as a block. Uh, just destroy this card. Your attack gets plus four damage. Your next attack this turn gets plus four speed. Only playable. This is your first attack for the game. So that's his whole gimmick in this set. Um, it's just to be able to play stuff first and do that. Uh, we're also going to get two copies of his asset card. So this is Taliban's Numchuck. So these stay in play. Um, but then they get, uh... They can't be committed like the foundations or your character card can. Um, these are kind of neat too because like this is actually going to give him blocking. If he uses this to block, um, he gets a uh, adds one to his state. He gets to add it to a staging area, and then he destroys both players. Draw two cards. 
just kind of a neat idea. It's like, say this in your hand, pick a block. It's only a one. It's just not, doesn't add too much. It's a good blocking card. It's in the middle, so it can block both. Um, and then you get to use it. All right. Let's get to some attacks. Here's four copies of Diving Beast Cannon. Does it slam and combo? Um, burst attack, gains extra speed, gains extra damage. Um, you know, pretty decent attack with four. Um, that's a, a high attack. He's got some low attacks. So he's got four copies of Rising Beast Cannon. Um, there we go. More, more similar stuff. He's got three copies of Just Beast Cannon. So it's kind of neat because it's just different cat. It's different things. He has his regular Beast Cannon, which hits in the middle. He can do the diving one, which comes from the top, or he can do his rising, which comes from the bottom. So he's got three different ways to do his beast cannon, which you're, you're familiar with fighting games. So lots of characters have different stuff like that. Um, and this one's like his one uh, enhanced ability. If, if the slam attack this turn, it's minus two difficulties. So you can actually make them um, easier to play or to fight against. All right, then we have... Two copies of Moment Slice. Now this has dots behind it. Um, I'm not a thousand percent positive, but I believe the dots represent the fact they were an upgraded version of a card from... Yeah. So here's uh, Moment Slice from the base set. It has no dots, and here's Moment Slice uh, from the upgraded set. So it's... So basically they did was because playing game characters, you know, series after series, you know, which have like five, six games or more, don't change your moves up that drastically. But this lets you have the same card name, same attack name, without having to try and make up brand new attacks for every game. Uh, but did some different stuff. So like this one, though, it's considered a throw, has three block, uh, two attack, uh... Uh, two attack speed, and then it has the four damage. Where this other one has a high block, five damage, or three damage, and five. Um, it costs the same, but it's also a punch, has some different things. So it's kind of a neat idea with the game, is you can have different versions of the card. Now, I believe you can still only have four copies of Moment Slice, regardless of how many dots are behind it, but you could have three of one, in one or the other, or two and two, um, or however you'd like to do that. All right, then we have three copies of Stumble and Blade. So again, uh, some of these are going to be showing cards from other characters. This is B Bonnie Hood. Uh, so it does have Slam, which works with uh, hit him as well. But now the effects aren't going to be as necessarily aimed at the stuff that his deck was doing before. Uh, but gets plus one damage, deals four more damage here, point, loses one vitality. So adding the extra damage does help, because he has lots of cards that do that. Got three copies of Shyness and Strike. Um, yeah, just add some more damage, has some stun attacks. And then we're going to get to our foundation. So about half our deck is foundations. And then the other half is the rest of the card. Maybe a little bit more than half. Because you want to have, like, although having a lot of attacks are great. Um, if you can't block stuff or you can't pay for them, then they're pointless. Um, I don't know the exact breakdown you should have. Um, I don't, I haven't played this, yo know, enough to know that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm terrible at making decks. Uh, quick and precise. Uh, so here you can commit this to get one speed and add one stun. He's got four copies of the Cruet's Bloodline, uh, which means speed or damage. Three copies of Cursed Fate. Uh, it's a discard. Your attack gets one card. So I like this one has a block in there. It costs zero, so this is a uh, great card to get out early on if you can, because it doesn't cost you anything. You play on your first turn, doesn't even cost. Better to probably play this, like, if it's your third or fourth card, like, oh, I didn't attack, I didn't attack, I didn't attack, now I can play this. The only way you have to watch out for that is because you might be like, oh, that's a good idea, because if it's my fourth one, I only have to pay four to play it, check for four. 
The problem is, if you fail one of your attacks, your turn is over. Um, so that's sometimes why it might be better to, like, um, if you fail any of your checks, your attack, your, your attack phase is over, your playing card phase is over. So sometimes it might make sense to play your higher level cards first and then play your lower later. But if you fail one of your checks because you played a, too high of a card right away, then your turn's over and you didn't get to play any of your cards. Um, we have three copies of Inner Voice. Um, so this mentions Momentum. Um, so what Momentum does is after your attacks succeed, you can add them into a Momentum pile, which is essentially like a super combo meter. Um, like lots of games you build for Super Mario, you can do ultimate attacks. That's what this Momentum meter does is there's various cards in the game that will play off of that. Um, depending on who you take um, or what card you get in the packs. Um, three copies of Key Technique. Uh, let's you do some different stuff there. We have two copies of Shunned. Um, yeah, the slam attack was completely blocked. Add one slam from your discard pile to your hand. So at least that's kind of nice. Uh, four copies of Basic Training. Commit your attack to get plus one damage. Three copies of first class materials. We have three copies of malicious heart. Uh, if the face of attack damage is at least double its printed damage, draw one card. Um, or flip after your opponent plays an ability, uh, the gains vitality cancel it. So that's kind of the flip effect means you can still um, use it. Or as a foundation, you can still use it to commit for stuff, or use your help pay for your checks. You just don't get to use the abilities on it anymore. Uh, two copies of Errands for Grandma. Has another flip effect. And then two copies of A Big Job. Uh, so this actually has one of the symbols. Your next check to play a Devil Horn. I don't remember what it might be. Evil or Chaos. Um... Uh, just plus two, and then discard one. Discard one momentum. If your attack base up attack, there's double printed damage. Get stunned too. So now you might be like, why would I want to play a commit card that ups my my check to make it harder? Um, it's because what you do is you're basically playing that against your opponent. Is what that is. Um, and then the last card of the deck we got was a uh, Heisen Co. Uh, character card. So our ultra rare here that we got in the deck um, is going to be a special char new character card. So now she has uh, 6 cost, 6 check, 6 hand size with 26 health. Um, so like as compared to... To John Talbin, so he has one more health than her, but he has the same other stats. Um, but then, yeah, she has some other different symbols on there. So now that's the thing that's kind of interesting about this is now you get this extra character, which is really cool, but we can't swap them out because none of the cards in this deck have any of those symbols um, at all. So we can't even play her with this deck. So it kind of gives you a, hey, I bought the starter. Deck. I got a deck I can play with. But you know, it gives you an incentive to maybe go look for these other cards. Uh, she also has F abilities on there. Um, which are focus? I might be wrong on that. Um, but they're, yeah, they're just a different time to play stuff. Um, to boost up your characters. And if that's first on it, it means you have to do that first. Uh, but yeah, she has some other different ones on there. Just a little bit more unique character cards. Uh, so you can choose one with that symbol in your discard pile. If there are no other copy of that card in your discard pile or staging area, add it to your staging area. And then twice per turn, commit one uh, momentum. Add the top card of either player's discard pile to the top of their deck. So that's kind of interesting. Alright, so that was the John Talbin deck, so now let's look at the Felicia deck, which I put back in the box. So now we have Felicia the Cat Girl. So now she does have different symbols. Now she does have this same middle one that's going to mask Heisenko we just saw. 
Uh, but now she gets seven hands. She's a little bit better hand, but she only has 20 health. So she's not as uh, beefy as the other characters. Um, but she's also going to have a very different play style. So it says, uh, add, attack to your, add your attack to your momentum during the end phase. And it says, your kick, punch, or slams get plus three speed if you have two or more momentum. If this deals damage, your next check gets plus two. Uh, so basically, yeah, you get the momentum, she can do more damage. She's going to have two copies of Ever Hopeful. Uh, so what's this in your card pool? So your card pool are cards you played during that turn. So while you play this during your turn, you can discard one momentum. Um, after you play this card, you add it to your staging area. Um, so you let you add it there right away. That way you can use it during that turn. Uh, it's just kind of neat. Um, or you can add this card to your hand. If, um, to add one of your opponent's foundations to your hands. So it's kind of a neat way to like bounce that card back and forth. Uh, two copies of Peaceful Coexistence. She can do, she's playing with the momentum here a lot. So, destroying discard with momentum, your opponent must discard one attack as an additional cost to play their next attack this turn. And then there's her non-foil version. We have two copies of an asset. Uh, others of her kind. Um, next check to play a foundation. Gets plus one. So after you play a foundation, your kicks, punches, or slams get plus one attack for the rest of the game. So now she also doesn't share any symbols with John Talbot. So if you bought both of these decks, you can't mix and match them together, which is kind of funny. Um, uh, I guess, I'm sure it's probably make, to make you have to go buy more cards. Four copies of Rolling Scratch, which is a slam. Uh, if it was modified, it gets extra damage. We have three, or sorry, four copies of Cat Spike. Uh, this attack deals damage. The next time you play a foundation, this turn, add it to your staging area. So, um, like, John Talbot stuff is all about the first attack he does is a lot of damage, or he can do extra damage, extra speed. Hers is going to be about building up that momentum, putting her foundations into play, um, and things like that. We have three copies of Toy Touch. Um, Sacker Fungate. Add a foundation to your hand. If you have two or more momentum, this gains extra damage. So basically recycling those foundations. Uh, scratch attack. Uh, we have two copies of Delta Kick. Add one card from your hand to your momentum. Uh, and then you get powerful two boost up her attack. Here she's fighting Lord Raptor, the British zombie. Uh, with three copies of Death Hurricane. Uh, it's powerful too and slam. After you review this card, your opponent loses one vitality. So reviewing it means discarding it before your draw phase. So it's kind of a neat thing to do. Like, hey, I don't want to play this. You can at least just force them to automatically lose a point of health. Three copies of Skull Sing. Skull Sting, sorry. After you review this card, if you have one or more momentum, you may add one other copy of it from your discard pile to your momentum. In her foundation, she has four copies of Agile. Uh, so again, when you play this in your card pool for the turn, she pays zero to play it. Um, I th think you still have to do a check on a zero-cost card, regardless. Um, so it kind of sucks, but uh, commit one foundation after you play this card, add it to your staging area. Um, so it costs a bit, but it's you know a great way to get it out, a cheap card out for free-ish. Four copies of Traveling Performer. Commit your deck to, che uh, to check the block against the attack that's plus two or your kicks attacking X speed or X zero momentum. You can make them kicks really hard to defeat. Uh, three copies of Gymnastics Technique. Uh, we have three copies of Strength of Tail. After you're ready, step back this card to your momentum. So it's kind of a, a nice one to do. And it's a response. You don't have to do it. Two copies of uh, Bridging the Races. Um, so we're going to get some stuff there. Four copies of Soul Beats. After you review this card, if you have two or more foundations to share a resource symbol with, 
add it to your staging area. So now you can see this only shares that one symbol with Felicia, because this is uh, Lord Raptor's cards. But you can kind of see he has stuff that involves your reviewing abilities. Um, four copies of Preparing the Curse. Um, so you can get first commit some cards. Three copies of Thirst for Power. Two copies of Oral Gag. Uh, so after you view this card, seal one of your opponent's foundations. Uh, which I mean, probably means flipping over, I would guess. Um, after your opponent adds one or more cards or momentum during the combat phase, discard those cards and add your scare momentum. And then he's got two copies of Treacherous Plans. Uh, let's him commit his foundation to minus speed. And then the last card is we got BB Hood. Or Baby Bonnet Hood. Baby Bonnie Hood, I think it is. Um, so you can see she also kind of like Felicia. She has seven um, a hand, but she has 18 health, so a little bit lower health. Now, it's kind of neat if she does share some symbols with this deck, or with uh, John Talbot's deck. You can use the flame. Um... But she doesn't share any symbols with this deck. She can't be used in this deck. She might share some. I shouldn't say that. She does share some with uh, these with the... Uh, uh, not these cards. The... Nope. I thought maybe she did. I don't... Nope. Does not. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but her... Whenever one of your opponents would receive... Damage or speed bonus, that bonus gets minus one. That's just an auto effect, which is kind of helpful. And then this face up attack gets plus one damage. If it deals with double damage, draw one card. Alright, so that's what we have for the Dark Stalkers UFC um, two starter decks, Felicia and John Talbin. So, in part two of the video, I'm just going to do a kind of quick run through of all the other cards I have that were from Series 1 and Series 2. Um, and we'll just see what new characters and different abilities. Just so if you're interested, you get a better idea of other cards in this game. Alright, see you guys in part two. Bye.